Hello and welcome to chapter 14, Analyze Servers and Get Support. Without further ado, let's jump into the console, shall we? So, we're going to discuss two main things today. Uh, it's going to be how to install and run Cockpit. If you don't know what Cockpit is, you'll find out soon enough. And how can we get some information about our server servers so it can you can make it a little bit easier to get some support either from official Red Hat engineers or from the community okay so let's just uh, discuss what cockpit is well cockpit it's not something new cockpit it's been around for some time now but uh, it kind of gain mainstream attention recently and cockpit it's a web based it's a web browser based administration tool so it means that i can open a web browser connect to my server and get some tools so i can admin the server without the need of touching the actual console so in theory let me just pull a couple of things here so in theory this is not working yet, which is trying to connect to the IP address of my server. Let me just confirm that, just to make sure that uh, I'm actually connecting to the correct IP address. It's uh, the 114. Oh, it's 250. Okay, 250. Still not working. It, it's expected. So that's, that's the fconfig. I have been messing around with the uh, networking. so. I was connected to the wrong IP address, but you at this point, if you went through the networking chapter, you know what I'm doing here. So yeah, it's a, in theory, in theory at least, it's a 250 IP address I need to connect. Let me just uh, double check that. So an MCLI connection show. In theory, I'm using the static to. And I can double check my IP. And well, I have two IP address because one is automatic and the other one is because I have my connection set to auto. I can fix that in a second. See auto. So it means I'm going to I'm going to obtain my IP address from the HTTP and also the my static IP address. So in theory, both IPs would work. But let me copy this. Let me do something like NMCLI, connection modify, static2, and method, it's going to be manual. Okay, and I'm going to do that also to the static, which means if I go to the show, I should be methods manual. Fine. So I don't have two IP addresses now. I just have the the main one, which is nice. And it's 250 and it still does not work 9090 because I don't have cockpit enabled in the server yet. So let's try to enable cockpit here on Rocky One. Where's my console? There it is. Now let's pull this the console here. Let's try to organize our space. And let's um Put this on top so this this is looking nice okay let's see if i can remember this from for memory um let's try to install it first so then if install cockpit or <coughs> sorry make sure that it's already installed and it's not yet installed so it, it's installed let me just uh, do a quick check for you guys let me just disconnect from my terminal reconnect and hopefully we will see a message. No, we don't. Okay, it's not showing the message I wanted to see. Because sometimes it shows how to enable cockpit, but it's fine. We don't need that anyways. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. Let's go put this on top again. Okay, let's go get, get some root access here going. Of course, I missed up the password like I usually do. And now. Let's just refresh here. It should not work yet. Okay. 
because it's not enabled. So let's see, let's see, let's then then enable it. So let's do systemctl enable minus minus now cock cockpit should be good enough. Cool. Now in theory, um, it should be good to go. See. Let's just double check. Uh, in theory, uh, let's see if the firewall it's co it's um, cooperating with us. So this is going to be unsafe, but we do know. And there we go. Now I can just type in my my username. And there we go, cockpit is working. Uh, since, uh, as you know, you, you, have, you have been going through with me with the the uh, SSH setup process and you know, that root cannot and, and log in remotely, but I can just click here, type in the password for the student. Student has sudo access and now this cockpit has full privilege over the system. And I can do, I can watch my logs, I can check my storage, configure networking, set up containers, set up accounts, set up services, and all of that you can see here on the left-hand side. So you can see all of this stuff you can, you can do. And this is pluggable, which means that you can add stuff here if it's not available here. And it's also the cockpit. It's also the preferred method, so to speak, of add, it's not the case here, but it could be, to actually admin virtual machines. So beforehand we had the version and, all, and those tools, but now, it's a, we have um, the, you can install the plugin for the virtual machines and you can explore cockpit. I would I could click here every here I could click everywhere and everywhere and show you, but it's much better that you um, actually experiment yourself and click around and see what can you do. So this is a good alternative to interact with the server if you don't want to use the. Um, terminal interface to interact. I do prefer the terminal, but sometimes I come here, it can be useful, especially some specific firewall rules and all of that stuff. Speaking of firewall, let's go here. Let's just get this out of the way. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this and do this and do this. Okay. So as you can see, uh, firewall, it's enabled. Okay. And you have also here the possibility of configuring the network. I can go to the firewall rules. And by installing cockpit by hand, the 1990 port was already uh, authorized through the DNF installed. Install, that's why it's already authorized and ready to go, or else you had to open the 1990 port or change cockpits from some other port if you actually prefer that. So that's cockpit for you. So this is just a matter of installing, enabling it, and you should be perfectly good to go. Oh, this is Rocky 2. I wanted to show you Rocky 1. And there you go. Uh, you just need to install Cockpit and then enable it, and you should be ready to go. You just type in your hostname or IP address port 1990, and you should be, you should be perfectly good to go here. You type in your non-root user, then you sudo to the root user if you have to, and there you go. If you want to have su receive some extra support, well, it's normal when you ask someone for help to get support about a problem. It's normal for that people, to, for those people or person, to ask you ask 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 you more files uh, of the server or more information about the server that you are about to request an assistance for. So that person could just request you file by file and. Send me log A, send me log B, send me log C, and you had to find all those logs by yourself, by hand, or you can just use a tool called SOS Report. And this is a very pluggable tool, which means you can extend its capabilities uh, um, at, at your liking. But by default, you just hit SOS Report as the root user, okay? And just follow along what he says. So just continue. Uh, enter the support case. The support case number is what you get when you open a support case, for example, an official support case with RHEL, and they're going to give you a number of your support case. You can put here uh, the number, and it's going to generate a summary of your system, and uh, like the main log files, IP addresses, um, 
output of the system 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 sockets and system units, uh, kernel messages, uh, storage devices, networking IP addresses and devices, network devices. Um, well, all of boot process, boot config files. Well, it's going to make a summary of your system that will make it easier for you to send to the person who's cre who's assisting you getting um, your problem solved. Instead of sending file by file, one by one, it just creates a tarball that you can just send it to the whatever person is helping you out. So if I go here, the file was is created with its checksum. Okay, I can just send this to the person with the checksum, or I can just extract it, extract it, and see it its contents myself, which is fine. It's just a, a bunch of uh, output redirected files that you can then just have a quick summary. Of course, you can use this, you can use this for your own benefit. You can have a, a small database on a shared folder of system summaries of all your services, of your servers, sorry. And this can do this for you, so you don't have to do this by hand and to collect file by file, that could be very, very tiresome. That concludes our chapter 14, NLS servers and get support. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I am happy to reply. Like and subscribe if you helps. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.